I finally got my first side effect of the growth hormone. Which was what? So this this thumb starts to click. <laughs> That's it. I don't get any carpal tunnel. Shut it down. Yeah, shut it down. Shut it down. No more gear. <laughs> Throw it in the trash. for life. So it's so weird. I wake up and then this this thumb, it's like clicking. So there's like some water. To, you can see my hands. I mean, it's a little bit more puffy than before. But this thumb, it it clicks. Like there's fluid in the joint. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I said, oh, that's the carpal tunnel that people talk about. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Look at that fucking contrast, man. Dude, I'm getting nasty brown. <laughs> I'm going for that Brazilian. Yeah, Brazilian look. The Brazilian kiss. The bronze god. I, uh, I still have the glutathione thing, so for me, it's not going to change much. <laughs> not going to change much. Glutathione white. Yes. I'm almost as white as your shirt. Well, yes, you're not falling. <laughs> 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 the reason for it, I'm not usually too fussed. I have uh, a natural bit of sun-kissed tan, right. but I figured... Leading up to the show, prepare my skin in advance, yeah. get nice and dark, and then I won't need as many coats of protein. You can still and add a lot more melatonin. I think oh. I still have one vial left, by the way. Do you want it? Sure. I'll yeah. It. <laughs> it's been sitting in my fridge for like two years, so. It's good stuff. Like, I, I, I so far I use it once a week, and I use mm -hmm. like uh, like five units like a tiny, tiny little amount. Half from half, 0 0.05 milligrams? Yeah. 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 And that's enough to make me real queasy and wheezy and bright purple and swollen for about 20 minutes. And then I fall asleep and wake up in the morning and go for my walks to the gym yeah. and get that sunshine because it's got like a 33-hour half-life. Yeah, so you take it before bed. Yeah, so yeah. you don't need to take it right before tanning. And uh, I think I might just bump that up to twice a week mm -hmm. and see if I can get ultra dark. But so far, so good. Pretty happy. Yeah, it's, it's looking pretty... Uh... Pretty juicy. Remember the time we took like half a milligram of melatonin on Patia and then we walked on the beach and then we turned into lobsters? Shoot, that was a bad choice. <laughs> that was a bad idea. That was a really bad idea. That was a little bit too much sun exposure <laughs> with no sunblock and melanotan. Imagine like and both seeing, pasty like, white. Two jack dudes, pasty whites, turning into lobsters while walking on the beach. It was that fast. Like by the yeah. time we had got back, I, went, I was white when we left and pink when we got back. Yeah. Never again. Never again. And that's how we start the show with yeah. <laughs> what not to do tanning <laughs> advice from the whitest guys in the world. Yeah, terrible. Well, at least you're putting on some color. Yeah. It's, for me, it's um, just going to stay the same way. It's, I don't have time to go tanning. Does it work for you? Yeah, I can get pretty tanned, man. If I yeah. spend the time, I have to spend two hours in the sun per day. But I get a desert tan, tan, tan soon. Anyway, get that Nevada, Nevada. Bronze. I got a little bit of a tan when I went to UTA, but it's already... A little t-shirt tan? Yeah, a little t-shirt to the farmer's tan. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I was outside for half a day, and then I turned red. Yeah, he had like, you know, red hair on the arms. Yeah, that's... Good it. stuff. Yeah. And it also means that your t-shirts are... Yeah. They're fitting. Oh, yeah. If you haven't got like a good t-shirt line that's like snug on the arm, you need bigger arms. So, so last month, I was 110 kilos, <laughs> and now I'm 112. Gains. I wonder Gains. if my face is the same size as the last time, though. Because you got some haters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, your face is gross. <laughs> Dude, I just put on like 30 pounds in no time. Yeah, sure. I'm going to be a bit. I use a jaw exerciser, you know, a little ball, and I squeeze it all night. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with having a good jawline. Yeah. Yeah, you can bite through apples and watermelons and, you know, chains. Yeah. I guess I ever got locked up, I just. <laughs> Eat it up. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny what people pick up on though. I was looking through some of those comments like, oh my God, there's some there's some proper retards in the comments. But it's people are getting meaner, yeah. Yeah, well, they're getting more not yeah, meaner, but mean off the back of just oh, pure jealousy. So I'm not sure if, if it's that it's so jacked so quickly and in the and you know, and they're still, you know, tugging each other off in the comments. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're actually making gains. Yeah. So they're like, what What can we say? What, what can we, how can I, how much can I hate? What can I pick up on Steve, you look older. Yeah. The no, saying, the steroids. Yeah. they hate us because yeah. they ain't us. They it's anus. never been more true. They, they're they anus. They're assholes. Yeah. They hate us because they ain't us. Ain't us. Okay. <laughs> they hate us because they right, hate man. us. It's all right. So I, I noticed that my Instagram is really taking off by doing two shorts per day. But then you also get like the, the, the drive by shit commenters. Yeah. yeah. I don't even read it anymore, man. No, I, can't, I can't deal with it. It's... Sometimes I have a chuckle at just how dumb people can be. Mm -hmm. And then the people with 
zero post. It's always fake accounts, right? Yeah, yeah, it's zero It's post. always <laughs> burner accounts. Like, you've taken the time out of your day to make a burner account to post comments that no one's going to read or no one's going to take. Like, do you, you think we haven't seen a whole bunch of hate comments before? You think we're going to read your comments and go, hmm, maybe I should rethink my life choices. Yeah. Like, what are you thinking? Go and get a hobby or g- get a girlfriend. Because we know you haven't got one. That's their hobby. That's drive by shit comedy. That's their hobby. It's it's a strange hobby, but hey, whatever floats your boat. But uh, it's it's definitely not sinking our boat. So you're wasting your times. Yeah, Um, we're still big. Actually, we're bigger than last time. We're getting bigger, and your comments ain't going to slow that down. So, did you drop two kilos, and I gained two kilos since the last episode? No, I also gained two kilos. <laughs> yeah, prep, prep did a little U-turn on me for a while there. I, uh, I bumped back up. Yeah, to your the comments only make us larger. Yeah, that's true. That's the, like because I was the deficit continued, and yeah, your comments actually added yeah like size seven pounds or yeah. something. Yeah, so, uh, I'm a leaner. Yeah, this one's, yeah, this sorry. one's for the haters. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> How have you been, man? Since the last time, fantastic, very, very good. Um, good. As you can see, I'm still. Dialed in, wired in. Mm-hmm. The body is starting to drag a bit. I'm not going to lie. My legs feel a little yeah. heavier. The mm-hmm. knees feel a little, a little more, you know, old, tender. And, uh, yeah, the walking and the steps are starting to take its yeah. toll a bit. But cognitively, I'm still very much dialed in. Still feel great. Energy is very good throughout the day. Fat is still coming off, so I can't complain. So how's the methylene blood treating you so far since <laughs> the last time? Very, very well. I like it. I bumped the dose a bit just to see. Well, what's the dose now? 10? Just, yeah, 10. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Yeah, like yeah. The, the, the dose that would be on the the subs that you can buy elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Don't know if I can mention those names. Yeah, but, well, people get. People get. Just ask. We'll yeah. point in the right direction. Yeah. But yeah, so I was using five milligrams of the liquid stuff that we've been making, mm-hmm. and I just bumped it up, just doubled the amount of drops, and mm-hmm. so far, so good. Yeah, cool. Feel pretty good. As prep continues, and I start to feel that fatigue and mm-hmm. i'm just kind of leveraging my dosages a little bit to to make up for that to make sure right. i am still very dialed in cognitively wise and it's obviously working synergistically very well with the fat burn stack so yeah although i've gained like my weight has fluctuated i went down as low as 116 and then very i went low tiny <laughs> tiny pathetic <laughs> puny human <laughs> and then it bumps back up to 118 and a half but leaner okay, okay. So, you know, there's that from the methylene blue or sprinkling in the trembolone sandwich. I also sprinkled in a little bit of VAR sandwich. VAR sandwich, okay. Oh, yeah, so, this was a trendless prep, right? This is trendless so far. Okay. Yeah, so, so, far. so far, so far. How much VAR are you on now? Just 25. No, that if it's legit, it will get the job done. It's legit. It's hitting good. The, mm. the, the brand that we're using right now, everything is hitting very, very well. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I think just a little bit of that added fullness that I'm getting from that with intracellular water retention and glycogen storage yeah. mm-hmm. off the back of that. Although my calories are low, I think they're being a lot more. I'm a lot more efficient at storing and utilizing that glycogen. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm retaining that fullness a little bit longer. So whereas before I would deplete a lot faster, now I seem to just kind of you stay harder and fuller yeah from start, that start a little bit harder and fuller but i'm getting leaner i'm five days like i do a dig day and i've just done two low days and another dig day mm-hmm. so i'm i came down again today to like 117.5 so on is, your low day you're still five kilos heavier than after my high day it's not fair man sorry sorry <laughs> i feel bad i mean i sauced sauced all the <laughs> sushis and the you know, Arabic food yesterday and, and a couple cookies sprinkled in between. And I'm finally 112. So it's, was that 250? Is that 250? It's not that. It's, uh, or 240. I know, it's it's pretty heavy. 113 is 250. No, let me. So you're just under 248, I'll guess. Let me see. Drum roll. 245. Ooh. 247. It's a respectable number. And what is, what is 250 then? 217? No. 215? 214. Oh, 114. Okay, 114. Two more kilos to go. All right. So let's see if we can make that with two more weekends. Sushi tonight. Job yeah, no, 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 no. I want one high day a week. That's it. <laughs> That's all I've got now. Yeah. Yeah. So that chopped up. So I've got one high day. Mm. Not really high. Like 400 grams of carbs is yeah. a high right now. But it's enough to get the job done. Mm-hmm. A couple of dig days and the rest are low days. 
you know, just trickled down to 117 again now, but I look like yeah, you look the, fuller the and hamstrings, denser, yeah, yeah, fuller and denser, but the, the, I'm specifically looking at hamstrings and glutes coming in. Yeah. And they're as lean as they've, they've never been this lean. Mm -hmm. So that's a good sign. And I think in the next three or four weeks, they'll be in. And that leaves me with a nice two or three week buffer into the show. So that's the plan. And the only changes as far as gear input is just being, as the training started to hit a little harder. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's just put in a tiny little bit of Anavar just to help keep the right. training output in place. Mm -hmm. And that adds that nice little extra pump. Like my, yep. my post-workout pumps are still looking so I see very I mean, saucy. On Instagram. Yeah, it's, I've uh, been I've been smashing the Instagram with the uh, with the pumps. <laughs> Hope you like my tits. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> hey, it looks good. I'm proud yeah, of it. I'm, of course, you, know, you look so great. If you don't like so it, don't follow. But if you good. like the pumps, yeah. If you get if I look like that, I post it every day too. It looks pretty yeah. cool, right? And you're only in prep, you know, once a year or whatever. So I'm, I'm a, I'll enjoy it while it lasts. But it's good so far. It's just enough, just enough to get the done mm -hmm. to get it done. Whatever else we leverage when the time is right, we will. But mm -hmm. yeah, total input now is still uh, one thousand four hundred and twenty-five milligrams, mm -hmm. and that consists of uh, four hundred and fifty milligrams of test, mm -hmm. six hundred milligrams of Masteron, mm -hmm. two hundred milligrams of Primo, which remains the same. Mm -hmm. And the twenty five megs of antibiotics. Yeah, he's one seventy five. Yeah, probably. And the uh, and the growth hormone is still at ten. Uh -huh. And we're, we're gonna pull that out on peak week trial run in a few weeks time. Mm -hmm. And I've got a funny feeling that is gonna tighten things up. Quite yeah, nicely. yeah. Because we still hold a good amount of water. I notice it yeah. myself. Like if it's if, not like a nasty look. It's not a bad no. water look. Mm -hmm. It's more of just like a fullness. Right. But I think it will just tighten everything up. Like just. Four or five pound drop of water yeah. makes a massive difference when you're single digit body. Oh, fat. absolutely! Yeah, 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 I'm going to take it out after I finish this this current growth hormone pen because I'm kind of tired of the water retention. I want to see what I look like now because I sometimes I don't get my steps in for the day because I'm just too busy, mm -hmm. and then I notice and over the day progressively I start to hold more water, and especially after refeeds I'm like a water buffalo. So. Well, I looked at myself this morning. First, you step on the scale, 112. I'm like, okay, great, and then you look in the mirror, like, eh, all the lines are gone. So I don't know, I'm probably going to take it out in about one week or something. So it's about two weeks before we fly to the US. I think you'll have a really nice yeah. overnight drop. You'll wake up the next morning like, there it is. Yeah. It doesn't take long, does it? No, about I mean, four how or five long days. Would you say, yeah, I was going to say, like, how many days before it's completely out? Two weeks. And you really start two. to feel like, okay, everything's tightened up. Yeah, it's about two weeks, but within the first four to five days, it's quite a dramatic difference. Mm. Yeah. Can't wait, man. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be doing it as well. I'm not going to take any before Vegas. So I, I finally got my first side effect of the growth hormone, which was what? So this this thumb starts to click. <laughs> That's it. I don't get any carpal tunnel. Shut it down. Yeah, shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> no more gear. Throw it in the trash. for life. So it's so weird. I wake up and then this this thumb, it's like clicking. So there's like some water. To, you can see my hands. I mean, it's a little bit more puffy than before. But this thumb, it. It clicks like there's fluid in the joint. Like, what the fuck is that? I said, oh, that's the carpal tunnel that people talk about. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Do you yeah. are you doing much gaming recently? No, I mean you're playing Space Marines. I've been doing Legos. Well, I tried to play Space Marines. My laptop's telling me to piss off. It's a little bit too slow for that game. Oh no! So I'm gonna have to I, upgrade it. I thought you bought like a whole setup, but this top is tough. I did, but it? the laptop itself is struggling, so I have to play around with some settings to mm. see if it will play. Yeah, unfortunately, so I've been missing out on the gaming. But now you've mentioned it, buy buy us eight hundred fifty dollars PlayStation Five Pro. I'm tempted to just build my own PC. You know, <laughs> yeah, you should. You know, it looks yeah. like a fun project to do. Mm -hmm. So I might just do that, but. Now you mentioned good luck the, with the, your the, GH fingers. Good luck yeah. trying to get those uh, little cables in there. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, the GH fingers and the, the carpal tunnel little, the only side effects that I, I really notice is mm -hmm. some of my meals I'll do with uh, a shrimp instead of chicken. Yeah. Because I'm going to potentially switch out some chicken with shrimp or some whitefish. Mm -hmm. And I notice the jaw pumps yeah. from chewing shrimp because I always bloody overcook it. <laughs> so it's a bit tough. <laughs> You know how to lift weights, but you don't know how to cook. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's a shrimp. Life, yeah. Like you got it so quick and it's done. But I always overcook it by like a minute, and that minute is enough to make it tough enough. Where I'm like, oh, getting a bit of jaw pump. And yeah. also, when I was gaming, like I was like, oh, that's the end. I had to take, it's, I had to it's take breaks. Also, man, 
So there is there is worse? a little. Yeah. Did it get worse after the Anavar? Adding that in because twenty five milligrams for me it just everything locks up. To be honest, since I put the Anavar in, I've I've done barely any gaming. Mm. I've been too busy to be honest. Yeah. So if you want to get over your gaming addiction, just throw in the Anavar and high dose <laughs> yeah, yeah, You can't. You can't. You, you just sit there locked up. You can. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And also, I can't sit down. Like I have to put an extra cushion on my chair now because as the body fat leaves my ass, yeah, it gets more and more uncomfortable, and you start getting numb, tingly ass. So I've got to get up, but then that gives me a good excuse to get more steps in. True, so, you know, swings and roundabouts <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> the, the, the constant seesaw right. of trying to balance life and bodybuilding, which is just impossible to do, but it doesn't. Especially matter. when you're large, you know, bodybuilding yeah. wins every time. It always will, but. Yeah, well, I'm I'm ready to throw in the towel. To be honest, I'm I'm feeling pretty big and heavy and immobile, and all my good shirts I can't fit anymore. So I bought like a super cool shirt off the rack in a UTI like triple XL. I fit it. This was like two and a half weeks ago, and yeah. I I can't fit it. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass, right? But that's why we're going to Vegas. Yeah, to do big some shopping. shopping. Yeah, big boy shopping. Big I can't boy wait, shopping. man. Monday we arrive. Tuesday we're gonna go shopping. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited just for the show. Yeah, he's already finding clothing stores. Yeah, this is my first Olympia. Yeah. And I'm currently a little bit more excited about the shopping side of it. Yeah, because we know who's going to be in the top five, but you don't know what you're going to find in the in the shopping That's centers. That's true. Last time I was yeah. there, 2018, I filled up my wardrobe and it lasted me about two years of just good quality clothes that were so cheap in the outlet malls. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited yeah. now because I can't buy anything here really apart from stuff like from this, this is Under Armour. It's the only place I can get clothes that yeah. really fits. Yeah. And if they're lucky enough to have a two, maybe a three XL in stock, um, and the shirts don't fit, it's always just tank tops. I got lucky in the, in the UTI. I just got something off the rack. Yeah. That, that cat shirt. You see that one on Instagram? I'll, I'll, I'll post it. Lucky you. It looks, it looks hilarious. It's all cats. <laughs> oh, I did see that one. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. yeah. So that <laughs> was a man one. Yeah. So I, I fit it perfectly and then I carved up a little bit more and now it's like I can't get into it. Oh, really? Already? Yeah. So I, I close it and then it's like, it's like holding on for dear life in this little button, you know, that's about to pop, you know, <laughs> Hulk style. Tops. Yeah, bang to tank tops. So. Tank tops in five star restaurants. Yeah. That's how we roll so over. So the growth hormone and the creatine is coming out soon. And then <laughs> uh, it's fun. It's fun what that's. You just got to get nice and sliced and diced. I, I missed this, uh, though. I, 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 did, I did miss this, this kind of shit for a year. It was a pretty respectable comeback. Yeah. Let's face it. It was People a freaking out in the a gym. Fast, it's hilarious. aggressive, very, very successful comeback, which yeah. just goes to show, I mean, you know, well, it worked. It doesn't matter what people say in the yeah. comments. If anyone can produce those kinds of comeback results after being natty for so long, mm -hmm. then I'll shake your hand. Yeah, well, I, it's a, I dare you. Muscle, muscle memory helps a lot. But it's funny to see the people that showed up to the muscle factory for like the last one and a half years. And they see me looking like a gym. And then suddenly I start to mutate. And they're like, what the fuck is going on? And then every Monday you get the same looks because I look bigger than the Monday before because yeah. I carved up, right? And they're like, what the hell's going on? And then you get a pump. It was pretty dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. And I didn't yeah. really... Because yeah. even when you were natty and you and you dropped down into the disgusting nineties, low nineties as well, it was uh, I, it still looked good, right? So yeah. yeah, okay, you were noticeably smaller, but it wasn't like oh, he's faded into. I didn't know, get a dad bun. No, it wasn't the, shape, the, the yeah. Thanos fade away no. into yeah. dust. No, it was still a very respectable physique, yeah. but when the rebound was happening, it was like, holy shit, yeah. okay, there it is. That, that, was, that was when you really noticed the, the turnaround and the big difference there. And yeah. uh, Good stuff. It was good. Good stuff, but I'm ready. Well ready, done. Congratulations. I'm ready to go on a cruise, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I'll take over for you. I'll, yeah. I'll raid the cabinet. I'll, I'll shuttle some of the gains and, you know. I will, uh, I'll take the gains again. Yeah, take it again. You can be yeah. at 130 again. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit leaner this time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. it was... Uh, it's, it's, it's a fun ride, right? But yeah. I so, think shopping in Vegas, though, can't wait. I'm going to get me some blue suede shoes. Yep. Going to get me some nice, smart clothes that actually fit nice, some quality, nice, smart clothes. And then a whole bunch of gym clothes that will last me a couple of years. And shoes. Yeah. Like sneakers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that we definitely got. So, the South and North Outlet, they uh, they have a boatload of sneakers. And you buy sneakers for $50 to $100. I, mean, I bought four pairs of sneakers last year, and they, they last. 
a long time, so. Yeah, that's yeah. the most. I always have like two for one deals on yeah. that stuff. Mm -hmm. Buy two pairs, get fr third one free or whatever. And yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm a little bit of a shopaholic anyway. You got you to remember that when you take the growth from on out, that you lose a size. Yeah, so, so buy a size you, bigger, yeah. for the off season because that's coming soon. Because all the shoes that I'm wearing right now, they're a little bit too tight on the GH. <laughs> oh man, I had, yesterday I got into my shoes. I'm like, fuck, it's not good. <laughs> this is not good. This is, and you feel like somebody's squeezing your feet, and then of course you start walking, you lose a little bit of water, and then it's okay again, you know. Because usually on, on Sunday when we do the refeed, I, I make sure I get my steps in at least that day for insulin sensitivity and to make sure that I don't hold too much water. So you don't have sloth feet for the whole day. Oh, man. Sasquatch feet. Oh, yeah. horrible. Yeah, it's not fun. I'm a flip-flops no. guy in the off-season for sure for that reason. So you can wear it. Pretty much, yeah. Mm. Or if I, like, or in the off-season, it is flip-flops and Jordan 4s because they're really wide. Yeah. And that's it. Like, well, Jordans are my running to hide. hide high, yeah, Jordans are the the way to hide the edema from the growth hormone. Yeah, especially yeah. if you get the high ankle ones. As yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, you get the high and then the ankle socks, you know, but that are not too tight, so you, the, the, you don't get the pitting edema. Yeah, you know why bodybuilders now they're wearing like higher socks and like bodybuilder lifting shoes are always really quite high up on yeah. the ankle. Mm -hmm. It's not for performance. It's hide the edema from it's the growth hormone. Edema. That's what it is. <laughs> Fat ankles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cankles. Cankles. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks, man. Yeah. I can't wait to take the growth hormone out now. I'm, 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 I'm kind of sick of it. I love it, yeah. but I am excited to see the cosmetic look change. Yeah. You know, I don't, and, and it will be nice to see that. And if I'm going to be nice and dry and peeled, it might as well be at the Olympia, right? Uh, this is the place to be nice, dry, and peeled. Yeah. And then you just have to hold it. So if I can be, you know, Somewhere between 112 and 115, dry and peeled, mm. inside out, ready to rock and roll in the gyms amongst the big boys that are going to be probably still 20 pounds bigger mm. and absolutely inside out shredded. Yeah. But at least I'll kind of not look ridiculous amongst. I think people are going to be surprised how big you actually are. Uh, I, I'm, I hope <laughs> I'm surprised. You know what it's like. You know, you don't know, do you? Oh, until you sit, well, you sit next to pros. Of course, you're not going to be the biggest guy. But, but, it's going to be one or the other. People that visit the booth, you'll, yeah. People, people that visit the booths, yeah, fine. Like if, when you see pictures stood next to normal sized people, and it's mm. like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm pretty big. But it's that thickness of some of these dudes, man. I want to, I want to pose down with a couple of these guys or just get some good pictures with them and just, and it's going to be one, it's going to be A rather than B, but A will be, Okay, I need another two or three years. These boys are massive. Mm. And B will be, oh, I'm not as far off as I thought. B would be nice, but the reality is, like, probably two or three years. If you start yeah, to when you meet some guys, of these guys, yeah. like, I saw a video today of like James Hollingshead in his off season. <laughs> yeah, stood next to like, yeah. who was he with? A couple of other guys. One of them was another pro bodybuilder who mm. just finished a prep. And he's a ginormous human being. He's yeah. my height. Mm hmm. So I looked at him next to other people at the same height as me. And I'm like, I think James is a little bit shorter than I am. He's like five no. seven, man. James, no, he's a five eleven guy. Really? Yeah, he's my shorter. He's my height. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Big dude, and you should see him right now. Holy shit, he's absolutely yeah, enormous. he's enormous. Yeah. But he's a thick, big guy. But then I never get the opportunity really to sort of make videos and, and stand and pictures and stuff and stand next to some of these other guys. So it will be a great opportunity for that. Mm. It'll give me a nice little humbling reality check. You know, I'm in no rush. I understand the timelines of this this sport. Just start dabbling with these pussy dosages, man. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> some guy, some tiny little Indian dude goes, why don't you take four grams? Like, you, with your size, you would be massive if you were on four grams. And I was like, well, I already am massive. I'm, I'm not four grams. <laughs> I said, why aren't you taking four grams? And he was like, oh, I'm not big enough to take four grams. I'm like, well, isn't that a better excuse to take four yeah. grams? Like, I'm already pretty big. Like, why? And, uh, I don't get the, it, man. I don't understand. And I'm like, I just said to him, look, bro. Individual responses. Yeah. One person's four grams is another person's gram. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever, what other people take and whatever you've heard is completely irrelevant. It is yeah. the most irrelevant thing you could ever think and talk about. Just do what works for you. And you leverage that over time as and when you really need to. 
That's how you intelligently build and progress cycles. If you're just going to look at someone else's cycle and go, do you know what? He does that, so I'm going to do that. Well, we've both well, seen that's how that 90, turns out. It's 90% of the fitness industry, dude. And it usually and goes that's horribly that's, wrong. That's why it's so funny because like, I do my cycles now a certain way, but I, I never built this size on what I do now. Mm. I built it on two, two and a half grams, three grams a year, right? Mm. With a boatload of food. But it's just so easy to sustain it on the small dosages. Mm. Like now I fuck seven fifty a week. It's nothing, you know. Getting no, growth hormone has got high. muscle memory that plays yeah. such a massive role. The genetic responses to gear, you, your your body's so much more efficient. You don't yeah. need as much to maintain. No, I, I agree. If you go back ten years and say, okay, I put myself in peak off seasons, trying to put on a significant amount of mass, mm -hmm. it might be a lot more gear. It was a lot more gear. It was like six know. I six I use GH and insulin. Fifty I use it some days, and two and a half grams. Of you know, right, and that's probably a reasonable off season kind of numbers yeah. for most guys, yeah. But uh, you know, what are these people are oh, so and so takes this, so and so takes that, and then there's no context, there's no timing. Is that at the very end of a prep when everything's in play? Mm -hmm. Why do you know the genetic factors involved there? Does it matter what someone else does? No, no, so shut up talking yeah. about other people's <laughs> dosages, it's so boring, yeah. It really is. Talk about the synergistic interactions between compounds and but it's and, too complicated. And yeah, look, look at my uh, deep dives; they're too long, man. You good. see the audience retention just. Yeah, just but he's on five grams. Just skip gear. to the bit. They look at the yeah, skip yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. How many milligrams? Yeah, milligrams how yeah, many for this? Without knowing the the ins and outs. Yeah, but I mean, like, just I've spoken a lot recently about my cognitive stacks, mm -hmm. and that was a few months of really trying to fine tune dosages. Right. Mm -hmm. And then as prep's gone on, I'm still fine tuning it to make sure I have that same vibe and feeling every day. Mm -hmm. This is the interesting part. Like, learn about yourself, learn right. about your own responses and your own individual responses to certain compounds and supplements. Do your blood work, test these numbers out, think about how you feel, really collect some data, and then you start to actually learn about your own biology and how to really biohack it because mm. trying to biohack yourself with someone else's plans is not really an intelligent way of going about things no. it might be a good foundation and a starting point of information but if you just spend a little bit of time and effort on just trying to figure out what works best for yourself it goes a long long way yeah. mm -hmm. like I recently agree. the only thing i've done is bumped up the methylene blue to 10 mm -hmm. uh i bumped up the uh, gorilla mind smooth yeah I just doubled the dose of that, which is still not a full dose, but overall alpha GPC is at like 600 now, whereas before it was 400 or mm -hmm. no, sorry, before it was six and now it's eight. Mm -hmm. And that's enough to give me a, a nice big Oh, so you take an extra tablet. Yeah. So yeah. I just, uh, and, and after, <laughs> say, like, well, guess what, what? One serving is three tablets, right? Uh, five. Five. I'll five guess, yeah, yeah, so I was taking it. two and now I'm taking four right. and blah, blah, blah. So. Uh, yeah, essentially, it's just as prep continues and as fatigue continues to creep in, I'm just managing that cognitive fatigue right. by just sprinkling a little bit more of the the actual ingredients that are going to give me that bump, mm. the L-tyrosine. Yeah. I want a bit mm. more of a dopamine hit when I start the day to really right. get myself awake. And then as the day continues on, okay, I want a little bit more of a calmer, chill vibe here. What's What's got a little bit more L-theanine in it? You know, where can I leverage certain things? Do I want to mm. be more focused uh, for productivity wise, okay, I'm going to start leveraging a bit more of the right. lion's mane and stuff like that. So just playing around with it and just don't blindly take a bunch of shit. Maybe just read a little bit. So you kind of know how these interactions take place. Too much effort. Yeah, but just I mean, tell me what to take. You guys, like the the recent couple of episodes of uh, the Anabolic Roundtable with Dean and Kurt. Yeah. Great episodes. And I just listened to them a few mm. times. And I did some more deep diving and a bit more reading on some of the interactions at MAO A and B and right. finding mm -hmm. that sort of what's going to be a precursor for serotonin and dopamine, mm -hmm. at what times I want that, where's that fine balance for me, what else can I leverage there as well. And, and there's just loads of good information. So don't just skip to the timelines <laughs> where it just mentions dosages or this, this and that. Just you know. It's so individual, you know, and like yeah. for, for you and me, we're so in tune. So I can make adjustments on the fly, which I do yeah. all the time. And then maybe you get a, an update video later on. And then, you know, people are like, it's well, what is the bit. dose? But it's changed a bit, you know. Yeah. So but that's the fun. That's part fun. of the that's, biohacking. That's, that's part of the fun, yeah. That's biohacking. So you're, you're, you're biohacking harder than your cycle. Oh, for sure. What My cycle is super simple. It's boring. <laughs> boring as shit. Absolutely boring. I've yeah. got like four or five low days a week food-wise. One high day. Training's the same. We keep to lever we'll keep leveraging volume as fatigue hits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Cardio is the same, 25 minutes. Uh, my step bumped up a bit, 13 and a half thousand a day now. So I hit the treadmill a couple of extra s- times throughout the day. Mm-hmm. But the biohacking stuff, yeah, I'm, I'm playing around with different dosages as the yeah. weeks go by to make sure I'm wired in enough to do something like this without just being in total zombie mode. The so whole time. Uh, what is your average caloric intake, would you say? My average yeah, per day. is currently 2,100 calories. 2,100? My, my weekly average. Per day? Yeah. Jesus. So that's lower than me. Yeah. Yeah. I take 2,800 calories. I'm in prep, bro. Yeah. I should be, should be in prep. I've got to dig deep. I've got to dig deep to get this stubborn fat off. But yeah, averaging it out across the day, like there's three different caloric intake days. Mm-hmm. One is the lowest is 1,600 calories. Jesus. That's bikini diet Just stuff. Like, protein only. Mm-hmm. You know, there's these people that talk about, oh, if you're prepping on less than 3,000 calories, you know, you haven't got it right. Shut up. And some guys, you some just of these talk, yeah, yeah, they, you, you, again, individual you, response. You grow on 4,000 calories. Right, whatever. I grow very easily. I'm not a lot of food, but when I <laughs> diet, I've yeah. got to dig deep. Yeah, what, 300 pounds and 4,000 calories per day. Yeah, 4,500 <laughs> yeah. calories a day was my basically. Your height, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but whatever. People will say what they're going to say. Some of these top-level pros, like going to the Olympia top 10 guys, are on bikini diet calories. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Doing two or three hours of cardio sometimes. Like, don't get it twisted. You got to do what you, you got to do, man. Dig yeah. real yeah. freaking hard to yeah. get like that proper stage condition. Yeah. Some guys, fortunately, have genetically very, very good metabolisms, mm. and they have to. Wesley won the Arnold on like four thousand calories. Mm. I ain't Wesley. I wish I was, but I ain't. Everybody's different, you know. And Everyone is. For me, my metabolism is very adaptive, so I got to fucking ramp it down pretty hard. Also, at one point, yeah. good yeah. dig. Like the the best condition I've had previous to what will be this condition mm-hmm. was the China national show, the DMS right. one mm-hmm. where we dug down and that was 1800 also. Yeah. That was low. That was digging. Yeah. And uh, taking the test out for a month and it was shit. It yeah. was, it was real shit, but it was a cool look on the day. It mm-hmm. was pretty damn good. And uh, that was only like a year and a half, two years into bodybuilding and very respectable. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was low and that was really, really digging digging hard but if you take like thyroid medications and dnp you can eat a lot more here and really <laughs> oh. is this dnp <laughs> no that's gorilla mind energy shots i'm gonna take my gorilla. it was leg day today so this is my post leg day pick me up it, 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 it's a great product but getting the fucking top off yeah it's a bit annoying yeah i'll tell Derek. this is basically just uh respawn. this is a shot of respawn yeah no yeah, i like it how many how much caffeine is it? i'm not gonna sleep today. 200 that's not too bad. No, it's fine. Bottoms up. Cheers. Gorilla Cheers. Mind, Code Aaron, or Code Vigorous. Yeah. Code, Code Aaron. He's plugging it. So I already went through all my energy shots. Mm. That's nice. Black cherry vanilla. Yeah, it's fucking good. I like it. But yeah. I went through all of it before the Vigorous Q&A, so I can deal with the questions. This has got all the nootropic stuff as well, so yeah, this is going to have me wired in, which is good, because I've got my six-week out check-in video mm-hmm. going on YouTube tonight, along with my six-week okay. out posing practice with Chris mm-hmm. one rest day every week we meet up in the gym and just do like Chris call me air style yeah posing posing, 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 pose, posing, pose, 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 pose until you can't walk yeah Chris looking good man he's getting there mate he's yeah. getting, he's gonna look really good he's gonna two he's years good, under your guidance two and a half it's that sweet spot it's that two year sweet spot isn't it? Yeah. did you ever find that with a bunch yeah. of your clients in the past yeah. you yeah. get to two that years. Paul said this yeah. as well yeah. and he was like is that two years when clients just kind of it just clicks and mm-hmm. they're like okay i get it and they just put in that little bit of extra something something mm-hmm. but also at that point you've had enough time to really sort of dial in the nuances mm-hmm. and physiques just change different yeah. it's, it's just a time thing like people said to me what have you done different in the last year time and i said the five years before is what yeah. is what led up to this. This mm. year is just a year where my body's in a position to respond. It's just time. Yeah. Bodybuilding just takes time. And like, the 10 years ago, <laughs> yeah. It's probably a bit of that as well. It's, a, it's <laughs> just the finances. Like a, a lot of people uh, probably. don't forget. You got to remember that it costs a lot of money to do the blood work and the, the PEDs and, and, and the GH and all that stuff, right? So it adds yeah. up. So at one point, you're like, you know, you're rolling financially and then you could just afford 
everything and then you can invest a bit more into yourself and yeah. into your into your bodybuilding aspirations and it takes time so have patience yeah and we got a sweet deal in the growth room so we've got a decent deal yeah. as well but i do think what you guys have been introducing as far as mitochondrial health and cognitive health is going to be a massive yeah, a game difference. changer yeah. it's going to change people's preps as far as just how efficiently mitochondrial health is just mm. your mitochondria how efficiently that is responding and using if you're using fat burners whatever else you're using you're just you're just producing energy at such more a more efficient level and then how that coincides with yeah. the cognitive side of things and and keeping serotonin and dopamine in that kind of sweet spot where you can remain mentally productive and not because i think that's what kills a lot of people in a prep is just once this goes, your body follows. Yeah. Right? You I just think into a zombie, goes, and, zombie. The, and the, you don't want to do the cardio yeah, and you start cheating just, in your diet. And, right. And I think yeah. if you can get that dialed in, then it just takes away a massive amount of the, you know, quote mm. unquote suffering side of it. Yeah. My body still feels like it's six weeks out. Don't get me wrong. I'm dry. Some days I am like yesterday walking around, mm. went to the mall just to walk around the mall, get a coffee and do some steps. Yeah, I did last and Andrew's week, looking so at me like, "You all right?" And I'm like, "It's time to go home." <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, "I'm struggling. I'm really yeah. struggling here." Yeah, I had a and uh, physically, you know, it's gonna. Of course, it is. You're in single digit body mm. fat numbers. Like, you're not yeah. supposed to be in this position at this he at this heavy, and it's gonna take its physical toll. But that's something that you get used to and you practice over time. But cognitively, yeah, I, it's a game changer, and it's something I feel a lot of people will start to to work on a lot more in the future. You, you didn't have the, the the F or the the moment yet where you want to email all your clients like, I'll talk to you in a month? Uh, no. So I have, <laughs> usually I would make that video. Yeah. I would yeah. make a, usually I'd I make I need your post. patience and your distance because I'm four weeks out and I need that. Maybe I, four weeks out yeah. that might come in. I might make that post where it's like, no, I don't think so. We're if I start. sound a little bit snappy, if I'm a little bit slow to respond, if I start blurring, slurring my words, mm -hmm. Uh, then, then yeah, it's because I'm four weeks out. Just have patience. Bear with me. I'm still, I'm still hanging in there. Blah blah blah. And I think you'll be fine, man. No, yeah, I think I'll be fine. Like I, every prep I go through, mm -hmm. I typically mute a lot of people on yeah. social media that kind of just bug me, and I don't want to see their shit. Yeah. I also usually delete a few point. people yeah, and unfollow a point. few people. Yeah, I'm at the point because I think there's a level of clarity that comes with prep, which makes you see things. It makes you a little bit more aware of certain things that maybe you were kind of just not paying attention to before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it helps you just reprioritize who is the priority. You've got only yeah. got so much energy, so much mental energy. You take away the noise. And you want to just only want to prioritize the energy for people mm -hmm. and clients that need it and deserve it. True. So I start just removing people from my from my life. I just unfollow and delete a bunch of yeah. people that are just like, well, they'll get nothing out of this person. And they're probably just you know, chatting shit all the time behind my back, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm just like, do you know yeah, what? I'm too old for this. Yeah. Just unfollow, mute, delete, see ya. And yeah. then and just reallocate my time for people that actually need it. So mm -hmm. that's quite a nice thing to do. True. It's like... Yeah, it's like a cleanup. It's yeah, like cleaning it's like out your closet. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you throw out a bunch of shit you've been hoarding. Yeah. Same with people. Yeah. Yeah. As, <laughs> as rough as it sounds. And you're not on trend. Right? And, but, <laughs> but here's the difference. I'm doing that. Yeah just just doing it and saying nothing mm. and just getting on with it and feeling like it's a good positive mood and justifying these decisions mm. whereas if i was on trend you, you, i might you be a close, little bit more angry close, when i do you it to close the deal yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah, i close might, the door indefinitely right i might say something <laughs> fuck you yeah and then block. Do you know what yeah. fuck you and then delete them yeah. whereas now i'm just like eh, block them yeah, yeah, yeah. see ya yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm at that point also yeah. But it's 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 got to be done. You have to choose your circles wisely. I say it all the time in my posts, right? Keep mm. small circles of people that really are worth your investment on time. There's only so much time in the day. You only have so many years on this planet. Life mm -hmm. is finite. So allocate it wisely because there are many, many people that will just waste your time because they can. Yeah. yeah. No, if you let them. If you let them, Exactly. Yes, which I don't. So choose your your chosen family, right? Your friends are your chosen family. Choose them wisely. We'll have a nice uh, party at the Friday barbecue hotel buffet for my birthday. Yeah, small circle. Nice, nice bit of proper grilled meats and 
<laughs> no carbs for you. You got to deplete extra hard. I'm drooling a little bit. That's going to be a skip three meals before I go to that one. <laughs> I'll, bring, I'll bring the cynical. Yeah, please yeah. do. Yeah. But that'd be, that'd be nice. And, and then, then we get to hang out with a bunch of cool people in yeah. Vegas as well. Yeah, yeah, Vegas is going to be a lot of fun. Lots of cool people on the same page. People that are... I'm happy that Chase got that booth together, man. It's going to be so... Because people will be stopping by all the time. Like, Has I anyone know, ever done that before? No. I wanted to do it last year, and then uh, people kind of dropped out. But now we're all doing... Like Chase and Paul and you know everybody else, it's like their channels have been taking off the last two years. And uh, so financially, it's feasible because it, it costs about fifteen hundred dollars a person, right, to have that booth with the you know the the furniture and the, what's extra stuff and just paying for the you know extra fees that are always hidden. Um, it's so, not cheap, but you know. You so know, so now the, this will be just be the first hangout of YouTubers as a booth, and they just come sit and have fun and. Instead of us walking around, and I didn't see you because you were walking around. No, just come booth 201. We'll be there most of the time. I got some, you know, a thing that I need to attend to for the um, uh, the Mr. Olympia University for about one or two hours. But the, most of the time, we'll just be there. It's just cool because everyone in that booth as well are very much... It's yeah. like bodybuilding, the bodybuilding unfiltered group. Like mm. people that are just, just say it as it is. Some just genuine people. Mm -hmm. We all talk to each other online. Yeah. Most of us have never met. I mean, you have. You've met a few of them. I mean, them. most of the guys, yeah. But there's a few guys I've spoken to. I've been on their podcasts and stuff like that, but I've never met them in person. So mm -hmm. it's a really good chance to just just chill out. Yeah. You know, chill out with the boys and, and just and just nice to be around some people that are, are just on the same wavelength. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, it's just me and you here. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, give or take a few other people that we like and mingle with, but... Yeah, it'd be nice just to have that opportunity to just hang It'll out with some cool, cool influential thing. people. Cool weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Talk shop, compare arms. <laughs> Size each other up as he's, usual. Steaks. Yeah, you give each other a hug and then you check yeah. the lower back. How lean are you really? Shoot each other's delts up and stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll get a microwave together so we can eat. And then... Uh, just hire a grill, man. What, I, what I'm looking forward to is like, if, if we come early enough, you have New Tech, right? New Tech will probably have like an entire gym set up again. At the so, expo? Yeah, so we can just that sneak cool. in a workout. Just get a in. Yeah, yeah, get a sneak out in a, in a workout in. Dude, that, I've heard that stuff is nice. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. We'll go to Torture Gym. Like that's the... if I, When I build my home gym in a couple of years, that's all New Tech. Do they have uh, like changing rooms and showers and stuff there? Uh, the toilets in the Mr. Olympia Expo, I would not visit even if you don't touch anything. Okay. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's air conditioned, right? So you That'll probably, be a rest day. Yeah, you probably just get like a towel and wipe your face and then the rest of the time you sit in your own sweat. It's, you know. We'll get an early morning pump before we go to the booth. Yeah. I'm not going to that booth without a pump. There's some big boys there. <laughs> Well, you can get a pump continuously every couple of hours. You just go to New Tech because they'll just let you walk in and use the equipment. Yeah. And I saw people do entire workouts there. So I'll have little uh, Yeah, so Friday and Saturday morning, I'm just <laughs> going to go to the booth, drop my shit off, change it to, or, or put some workout clothes on, and then just get a pump in at the New Tech booth. I'm just going to chug nitric all day long and have little Anadrol breaks and pump Yeah, breaks. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, Where's Aaron? He's yeah, yeah, he's just going to pump. Where's my Anadrol? Yeah, oh, yeah, Aaron. Uh, Aaron took it. Uh, <laughs> sublingual, <laughs> foaming at the mouth. And, white powder yeah so that's bursting from t-shirts yeah. all day long and then we'll probably get some meal prep or, or some protein shakes you know as we go along because most of, a lot of the guys will have like protein shakes available yeah yeah pr cookies and protein shakes yeah, everyone yeah. there all the meal prep companies will be there and yeah. everything right mm -hmm. you know yeah. get some trifecta meals in the go yeah or muscle meals whichever one's the most popular these days whatever or whatever's available and then at the end of the on a saturday afternoon you go to the uh the clothing shops and you just clean house yeah, everything will be 50% off. It's Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, they won't if you're size anyway, man. Uh, yeah, there sure. might be might be some guys, but they're, yeah, the XXL stuff I don't think is going to sell out. This is the trip where I, I'm just going to get get buy all my sizes early so I don't miss out. I'm not waiting until the end of the day when there's no more decent sizes left. I'm going to get everything on 50% discount, whatever's <laughs> available. It's, yeah, but uh, you're about to go TRT... You know, for life mode. No, so you'll have to do a cycle again next year. But everything. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. You just told me five minutes ago you've had enough. And you're yeah, for go. now, for now. But after, like, when it's April time. For a week. It, no, no, that's, <laughs> that's, you, know, that's you, you. You're, like, off cycle for two weeks. Oh, I feel small. It counts. <laughs> it counts. It counts. 
<laughs> I metabolize very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Ish. It's like I'm only 100 ki- 112 kilos. I feel small. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I'll probably cruise for a couple months, man. Gay. Yeah, I know. But I, at least I won't be 92 kilos skinny fatty. Perma cruise, perma bulk. No, I'll just do 150 tests and some GAs. And, yeah. Yeah. Keep saucy. I might I might do like 500 tests, 500 deca, and 100 milligrams mint. Mm. Grow this guy now. Oh, God. They'll be in the comments after you just said that. Yeah. Grow this guy now and then suck, uh, suck it out. Suck it out in, in November or something. Yeah. yeah. Good. Hey, I'm going to... Uh, it's, it's we're both going to be surgery. It's, it's, it's under control surgery now. Repair it's next under year. control now, but I just want to... I don't want to do the surgery twice, so might as well throw the kitchen sink of the... Progestogenic 19 ores at it, and yeah. then estradiol, methyl estradiol, maybe throw some D- Dianabol for good measure. Yeah, flare it up. Flare it up for a month, and then uh, get it, it all out. cut out. Yeah, it's a good yeah. shout. Get it done. Yeah. It's, it's a- easy. It's a quick recovery, mm-hmm. you know, these days as well, especially here, you know, quality surgeons. and Yeah, hospitals. I already know where to do it. I didn't want it's to do it two nice. years ago because I didn't feel confident with those doctors, but now I found the guy that's, that's actually very yeah. good. And affordable, and then I'll do um, LASIK eye surgery at the same time because I won't be able to go to the gym anyway. So get the surgery on the eyes, get the surgery on the nips, and then in December I should be ready to go to, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm mm. going to get a bit of cosmetic stuff done next year as well. Yeah, rhinoplasty. Going to get this <laughs> tattoo removed, get my shitty tattoos removed for uh-huh. sure next year after this competition is done. I'm mm-hmm. going to get all that done. I've got a couple of little tiny lipomas on my belly, which I'll get sucked out. That's easy. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit of Botox, but I don't know. It's, you know, don't with, with, with a tan, I still look pretty young and fresh, I, I think. think you know, Botox. Do I still look, do I look 26? No. Oh. <laughs> no, I wish. What do I look, honestly? Yeah, 38. Ouch. Yeah, it's the low low body fat levels and a lot of gear. I look older too, man. Look at the videos. Thirty eight, not. But I mean, like, there's some guys are twenty two and they look like they're fifty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah. I don't, I don't get the really aged face look from gear, which is nice. You get the, you get the skin folds and the, and the jaw pump. So yeah, you look- so I have a fat face and normally, so I get these like you know the bulldog, yeah, the, the bulldog folds, yeah, here. But yeah, that adds character. Does it? Yeah, this adds character. You know, like the Robert De Niro kind of. Mm. Facial features. I don't know. This will help to my, for my acting career after bodybuilding. <laughs> You've got to have some strong features, you know. <laughs> You'll be playing villains. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Big giant villains. Yeah. Yeah. Mob, mob bosses and oh just my God. henchmen and yeah. stuff like that. That's yeah. my dream Hench- job. Henchman number four. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly in the credits. That. Aaron Burke. Yeah. <laughs> Happened once in China. Oh, yeah. You did the white monkey job in China. I did, did the, the, uh, my acting debut. Mm-hmm. And they just said, you big, you white, you look like killer. You want to be a movie? That's literally what they said. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And what do you know? I was in a movie. So How much yeah. R&Bs did you get for it? I did get paid nicely. Yeah. And they paid for all my travel, accommodation, okay. and the, the experience of being on set and stuff was was awesome. Uh-huh. It was a really cool experience. Okay. And it did make me think, I want that's something I definitely want to try and do again one day. Mm-hmm. But first, get to the Olympia. Yeah, so that's later. We'll you come could back. Be a we'll villain there also. <laughs> <laughs> Start talking shit about everyone. <laughs> no, no, no. Be, bad, be the next yeah, uh, King do, Kamali. Do, do the bullshit high roller stuff. You know, go eat some steak, smoke some cigars, go to the strip club. That's, oh, that's, I thought you meant be like the villain of no, body. No, no, no. Start no. calling we're, people we're, out. We're too nice. Cool. Start calling people out online about their cycles. But and, you can't go to the Mister Olympia. That's why so many guys are not there. Really? Yeah, they're scared. Oh, too many haters. Yeah, they got too many haters. They they talk too much shit, so they can't go there because all the all the people that they talk shit about are there, and then they get and they don't want to actually say it to their face. Yeah, oh, surprise, surprise. Yeah. Hey, it's easy to be nice, guys. Just be nice. Just be nice. Just be nice. Just be nice. Just be, nice. be massive and be nice. If you're small, don't be a hater. You just look like a bell end. I think as you gain more muscle mass, you get nicer automatically. Right, it comes with the. Package. I, wonder, I wonder what what like the the the, the body mass index and the and the weight cutoff is, where you just get nicer as you get bigger. Because I don't know any any dickheads that are big. No, most people only only dickheads are small. I'd say some big guys are dickheads to other bigger people. Yeah, but that's usually from a jealousy point of view. Mm-hmm. But in the vast majority of cases, 99.999% of people that I know in bodybuilding are fucking awesome. 
Yeah. Good people. Yeah. Bodybuilders. In, in, cool in, in like real, what we consider bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, living the lifestyle, going to the gym, taking some steroids and it's, but then as you go downwards, it's like the, like the gym rat level. That's where the dickhead starts to manifest. Yeah. Uh, for sure. We're in the coaching world as well. Oh yeah. Over the last few years with this influx of new coaches. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. There's some fucking egos. So chill out, guys. There's yeah. plenty of people to coach. Like just- I see it on my Instagram reels. Like, like, they're a minute long, right? So you might lose a little bit of context. I just see these comments for these coaches that are really high and mighty on them. This yeah. makes no sense. You shouldn't do this. You just say, who the fuck are you yeah. with your fucking 75 kilo wet through frame? Shut the fuck up. Yeah. I, 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 haters gonna hate. Hey, haters, because they're anus. Because <laughs> they're anus. Insert uh, James Franco's <laughs> face just here. James so, Franco. You know the the uh, the, uh, the interview. You know when they him and Seth. Oh right. Go to yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah, interview South, uh, South Korea, uh, North Korea. Guy. North Korea. Yeah, yeah that's a that good one. It's from that one. That's a good movie. They hate us because yeah. they hate us. <laughs> that's a good movie. Great movie. Yeah. But more, more, all the, at least from the two times that I went to the Mr. Olympia, I had great experiences there. I imagine so. I've, yeah. Every single bodybuilding show I've ever been to has been awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. even the low level stuff, like yeah, the amateur are, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Athletes are just cool people. Yeah. You know, most people are cool. It's only yeah. online. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. What oh, well. about, uh, did you get your SLU in yet? Uh, no, it's on the way. On the way. All right. So, so you're, you're I'll quiz you on that next when you've actually had a chance to. Why? Well, I'm using it now, but I'm getting a second shipment in. Oh, so how is it? It's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I made the deep dive. Because that's why I want to stack with the fat burning now. That's probably yeah. going to be the last thing to add on to the fat burn stack. Mm-hmm. And that might just be the sweet spot to finish things off. I, I, I think it's great. It helps with cognition. It helps with energy levels. Um, you really feel that the mitochondria is upregulated more than before, but I was already on an extensive mitochondrial support stack. And I uh, feel that fat loss is easier. Um, Resting you know, heart rate still in check. Resting heart rate is the same. You know, I took the mirror big run out and I switched it to Clembutrol, so my resting heart rate, well, did increase a little bit. But- only a little bit. Only a little bit. I think it was already a little bit of beta two adrenergic receptor downregulation from the mirror big run, even though I can't find any scientific evidence to support that. Um, so it, it, the clean didn't hit as hard as I would expect. Going from 150 milligrams mirror big run to 80 micrograms uh, clenbuterol. Do you think that's something to do with the method in blue? Could be. I noticed it. You noticed your resting heart rate is less on drops 10 points. Oh, that's quite a bit. Quite a bit. I'm still losing fat. Yeah. And it's probably working. It feels like it's working more so in the background. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my rest and heart rate is okay. way better since I started Method and Blue. I was expecting it to kind of Go push up, things a yeah, bit faster. Push, yeah, 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 but yeah. I think it makes things more efficient. Mm-hmm. So you don't get the side effects of yeah. rest and heart rate. Same, same, with, same with SLUP. So you're still going to get the nutrient partition yeah. and, and all the best stuff that's going on with clenbuterol without the nasty increased heart rate all the time. Right. So will that negatively affect neat calorie burn throughout the day? Maybe that's, maybe that's, no that's why you're eating 1,800 calories because you're so efficient that you don't need to eat much. That's that's what I suspect. Maybe. maybe because the SLU hard. makes you super efficient also, but it does increase your appetite and body temperature a little bit. That's, yeah. you know, that's, you but can it's doable. It's yeah, doable. You can yeah, deal with that. Doable. That's fine. But yeah, I think I'll probably add that in pretty soon. Mm-hmm. So that, a bit of Clem, the 5-amino 1-MQ. Mm-hmm. And what else? I take take the uh, cycling Gorilla Mind PM cycling, yeah, mm-hmm. which is like quite a nice little pre bed kind of fat burning like yeah, stack. optimizer. Yeah, yeah it's nice, mm-hmm. nice little add on. It's very side effect free. Mm-hmm. Um, plus the growth helping along with a bit of lipolysis. Yeah, and then you add in the SLU. Yeah. What, got, what yeah, as in the, got Helios in there as well, or the Pyro from our favorite store that we can't mention. <laughs> um, <laughs> around the workout window. So yeah. yeah, all in all, I'm kind of attacking it from all angles, but mm. I don't feel at, at any point like jittery or that high anxiety sort of crackhead vibe that you would get typically. Maybe from the nootropics that you take. I think yeah. something there from that stack and the methylene blue, I mm. think is helping all of these things work more efficiently with less side effects. Yeah, And I like it. Good. So let's add in the SLU soon and see if that complements everything even more. Yeah, I like the SLU. I uh, think I'm going to. You know where you can get that? Code vigorous. Record Aaron.
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you prefer, whoever Whatever you want to support. Prefer. We appreciate the yeah. support either yeah. way. And so we, we appreciate the support as well from all the, the feedback and the engagement and stuff from the reels that we do from Nussle Nomads. Yeah, those were good. So good. Like, you guys are awesome in yeah. the comments, like the good comments. The losers, you're all losers. But the rest of you are, <laughs> are, getting are great. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's the feedback's great. So, you know, obviously we we were a little bit slack on how often we did these over mm. the last 12 months. I think just because of... Busy, busy, yeah. But you know, now we're going to make sure, and I got an, an extra chair for you, yeah. And you got way bigger as well, so, yeah. I know, felt felt too small. We're going to have to get a wider lens at some yeah. point, but uh, yeah, we're going to keep pumping back. these. That's we'll, better. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> and we'll, uh, but we'll keep pumping them out because yeah. they're fun. Yeah, we enjoy them, and we, as long as you guys enjoy them too, we'll keep pumping them oh, out. People were already asking about yeah. it. That's why I got you over here. And we're going to do a whole bunch of cool vlogging stuff in Vegas, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a lot. It's going to be some good footage from Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah all so PG footage, of course. No, all the all the R-rated footage will be on the membership site. Yeah, only fans, <laughs> vigorous fans, vigorous fans. I got to piss real quick. I right. won't we'll, we'll continue a little bit. Oh, <sighs> Jesus! All right, so talking about Mr. Olympia, do you want to make any prediction adjustments? <sighs> Based on what we have seen so far on social media. Oh, so hard, but okay. Yeah. In order? Yeah, let's just go first with the Mr. Olympia Open. Because Derek is starting to look extra crazy now. No, it's just from the back. <laughs> it's just so hard to look. Her back is hard to argue with. But then Hardy also looks full of I'm so 50-50 between those two. Yeah. I'm 50-50 between those two. You've got, you've got to beat the champ, right? You mm. can't, it can't be close. If you're going to beat the, ch if you're going to win, you have to beat the champ. Yeah, which happened last year as when Derek won, but Hardy was off. <sighs> but Hardy looked absolutely crazy at the Arnold Classic. Yeah. So when you compare Hardy from the Arnold Classic versus Derek Lunsford from the Mr. Olympia, I would give it to Hardy. Then again, Derek had a whole year to make progress, and the amount of progress that he made between last year's Olympia and the year before was insane. So if he can project that. If he comes in sliced and diced, he keeps it. Yeah. So that's the 50-50 one for me. But if mm. I had to choose right now, I would probably choose Derek. All right. I would still choose Hardy right now, based yeah. on the latest show. Two days ago, I said Hardy. No, yeah. I'm, I'm so back and forward <laughs> on it, which makes it great and exciting. Can't yeah. wait. Uh -huh. um, so there's your top two. Mm -hmm. Third place. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Because mm -hmm. have we seen Samson? Yeah, he's progressing a lot and working with uh, the guy from Eric Health. If Samson brings conditioning like it looks on Instagram with the new size, I, can't, I don't know how he added more size, but he did. If that frame and that amount of muscle comes with close to hardy condition, that's he's in the mix. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can't write that off. That mm -hmm. size compared to two shorter guys with the aesthetics – as long as the condition is there, you can't write that off. No, I agree. Samson could walk in and win the whole thing. Yeah, since the last time we recorded, because last time he didn't look as good as he does now, he improved quite a bit since, what, four weeks ago that we recorded Muscle Nomics, four or five weeks ago. So now he's starting to look like he can actually be a contender. I think he's in the mix. Mm. Like that top three could go either way. Yeah. So I take it back. It's not 50-50, Derek and Hardy. It's... Uh, for me, it's still a safer bet on Hardy and Derek. It's still a safer bet yeah. just because of pre what we've seen previously. Right. Mm -hmm. But oh, everyone loves a wild card, right? Yeah. But you got to take into account the sheer size and aesthetic appeal of Samson mm -hmm. with condition is extremely dangerous. So uh, don't be surprised if he walks in and shocks everyone and wins it. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think he's definitely, a, no matter what, in that top three. Mm -hmm. Now, fourth and fifth is Nick and Andrew, in my opinion. Yeah. Nick and Andrew battling it out for fourth and fifth. Again, you can never write Nick off. Yeah. If anyone shows off up just a couple of percent off, Nick beats them. Yeah, if Samson's not in shape, Nick, Nick will beat him. Yeah, it's, that's it's, but the same with any of them. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, has he got the overall shape and aesthetic appeal? 
He makes it beat, work. To beat Hardy and Derek, if they're, if, if Hardy, uh, let me give you a scenario. Mm. If Derek or Hardy are off by, if they're not 100%, if they're 90%, mm-hmm. does 100% Nick beat a 90% Hardy? No. No, same with Derek. But he can barely beat a 90% Samson. I uh, think so. Right well, it'll now. be 90%. No, it'll be 97. I think he, like Nick, Nick was 97%. Nick keeps progressing. Yeah. I think Nick in another year with a bit more leg, potentially, mm-hmm. potentially becomes more and more dangerous and he's still young to keep progressing. Yeah. So he's going to keep battling it in, in, in that mix. He's always going to be on the back of people's minds. Mm-hmm. He could easily sneak in there and win the whole thing as well. If if people don't show up, and we've all seen it go wrong a lot of times, he he destroys a lot of people, and he could show up with ridiculous condition that he always brings, and he could win it. So I'm never ever going to write Nick off because he's no. just a, a freaking. He can't. He's he's just a he's, a legend. he's guaranteed top five. He's just and amazing. Then depending on who how he shows up and how yeah. other people look, Andrew Jax. In, in, in a bit sharper, secures his top five. Yeah, for sure, he secures that top five place, uh, potentially fourth if he really comes in dialed in. Um, he's definitely got the aesthetic and the 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 aesthetic appeal, like an amazing Adonis level physique. If mm-hmm. that is peeled, that's you can't take your eyes off of it. Let's face it; he hasn't yeah, got what, any weakness. What I just wonder, like with Samson. He doesn't really get smaller as he gets peeled, right? Because now he's in his best shape ever. Uh, Andrew and doesn't beat Samson. He looks bigger, right? So Samson, but with Andrew, I feel that if he really digs down and gets his glutes and hamstrings in shape, that he loses a lot of size. Yeah, he's still huge, though. Still huge, yeah, but it, he'll lose some of the pop. Um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But I do think that's still a top five physique, no matter what. Now, the one who can mm. sneak in there... Mm-hmm. And potentially battle both Nick and Andrew with yeah. Beerus. But is, is Beerus arriving? Is he arriving? We don't know yet. You never know. There's still four weeks. Yeah. You same never as Nathan know. the Asher. Like Beerus. Nathan, Nathan the Asher won't go. It, from a, from is legal. He pro- yeah. I don't think he's valid for a visa because of legal issues. Hmm. I think it's still a certain amount of time before his criminal record is wiped. As really? far as visa applications yeah. are concerned. That's what I thought. I'm not sure. So I don't think Nathan shows up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think Nathan beats any of those guys. No, that's what he I did. think Nathan is in the top 10 for sure. But I don't if, think if he's, he's there. Yeah. If he's there. I don't think he beats Beerus. I don't think he beats Andrew or Nick. No. So to me, Beerus, aesthetically wise and mm-hmm. condition wise, is pretty much almost the perfect bodybuilder. He's not got the size to battle it out with the other two short ones, Derek and Hardy. No. But aesthetically, incredible. It wouldn't surprise me if Beerus actually beats Andrew Jack. It, that is, that's the one. Like, that's a great battle because his conditioning is light years Conditioning ahead, you know? is better. And overall, mm. the way he's put together, proportions wise, is better than Andrew Jack, I think. Yeah. Mm. But Andrew Jack has the the symmetry kind of, he's got that taller, kind of yeah. flex wheeler kind of appeal like yeah. such a pretty physique um so that's a, that's that's another guy who could be in the mix there and then my wild card in that top six mix up is uh martin fitzwater yeah i agree i think he comes in peeled i think he could potentially be looking at pushing that top six kind of mix up so i think got, i think Martin, Fitz, Andrew, Fitzwater will Beirut, be in the top six. Beirut is not there. Simpson, Hardy, yeah. So one of them might not be. Uh, you never know. So I've got like seven guys there, which I think pretty much solidifies that top seven. Mm-hmm. I don't. I can't think of anyone there that might be able to beat those guys. I don't think Bonac beats any of those guys. No. Uh, everyone keeps talking about Hunter recently. I still, no disrespect whatsoever. Incredible bodybuilder. He's huge. But what I just saw in Italy... I don't even see that as a, I don't want to say talk shit about bodybuilders. And this is just my personal opinion. It's a subjective sport. I don't, it, I don't particularly like Hunter's physique from what I mm. like, what I like from a bodybuilder doesn't do it for me. I know it does it for a lot of people. I appreciate he's a great bodybuilder mm. as far as he he's massive. You're right. Yeah. But for what I'm looking at, an overall package there, I don't, I don't see it. I, to be honest, I didn't have him win in Italy, 
No. I thought that... Uh, it was like over diuretic, I super thought flat. Andrea Presti or Lorenzo were both better. Um, he was big, but I still don't think he... To me, I just don't I don't get it. I don't see it. No, I'm, I'm the same. I don't I, see I, it. In I, person, it might be different. On Instagram. It might be, in person, I might go, oh, shit. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But on Instagram and what I've seen, I, when I watch the live stream of Italy and, I, and I, I've seen all the footage and different people's phones and cameras, mm. I don't see it. I don't get it. He's got massive arms. He's got some good body parts, big legs. Mm. But it's nothing to me compared to any of those guys we just mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I still think there's a couple of other guys that sneak into that, that beat him, that are smaller. Who else have we got? There? Well, we got Rafael Brandeo, and I honestly have Rafael over, you know. Raf Rafa beats, to me, beats Hunter yeah. all day long. Yeah. Like his physique is way nicer to look yeah. at. And he's big as well. He's way bigger now. He's a bit, bit bigger. So I, d I don't see Hunter beating someone like that. No. Tony O'Burton's not going. No. Akeem uh, Williams. Williams, his condition that he brought in the last couple of shows was good. He's lights Chris, out. Chris Aceto. He's amazing. He's just got a couple funny body parts mm -hmm. that are a little bit, that score him down a bit. But as far as a hardness, fullness, and condition, amazing. I, mm. I think he beats Hunter. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. You Bra know? Brandon Curry. I mean, I haven't seen anything. He's placed top five for like the last four or five years in a row, right? Yeah. He's been in the mix. I haven't seen anything. He doesn't usually post too no. much. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like quality physique, overall kind of, you can't write him off. He's got a very, very pretty physique. Yeah. It's just no one sees a lot of him. So he's not in people's minds, but he's one of those guys like. And it's weird because he won at Mr. Olympia. But then every time you do your predictions, you're like, Brandon Curry, eh, I don't know. Because he won the Olympia that. He won that Olympia. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. Uh, yeah. Still amazing, but I still think he beats Hunter. Uh, yeah. I think he's much better to look at than Hunter. Yeah. Maybe not quite as big, but he's definitely quality-wise as far as symmetry, proportions, mm -hmm. condition. I don't, I don't see, and I'm, I'm just speaking, I don't want to hate on Hunter. He's a nice guy. You know, he's a great bodybuilder, but it's just my it, personal it, opinion. It, where did it, it, the physique doesn't translate to the stage. Yeah. And I just, it's been I'm going just, out like that for, that, for a while now. That midsection, you cannot be a top 10 Olympia with that midsection. You just mm. can't, you can't do it. Some of his posing is a bit weird and off. Mm -hmm. His condition was... He looked full, but spilled over a bit. Yeah, I don't know whether flat, it, he looked flat to me. His yeah, I don't know whether it was like a full spill yeah. or a flat. Yeah, it, yeah. Actually, when you think about what his chest looked like, it was a bit flat. So that looks like it was a bit of a diuretic protocol yeah. gone wrong, mm -hmm. uh, where he probably didn't. Based on his pictures leading up to the show, he probably didn't need any diuretics. So that well, was he great. He looked great in the pictures on Instagram. Right, right? He could have stepped on stage. And just then like they that. do the cookie cut uh, peak week. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I don't wrong. know. Ben is a little bit smarter in cookie cutter, but maybe, maybe just spilled over from the flight, and then you have to. I guess there's a lot of pressure, and you get right? Flat in, yeah. So. I think I think the pressure is more so. Do we want to not use diuretics, and go with the where well, they should do that, mm. or like, or oh, just in, it's that just in case mentality, right? And then you take it the morning of the show. And, and it will go to <laughs> you know, Horrible, right? Because it's the difference between a quarter yeah. of a diocide too much and like, yeah, yeah. or not getting the timing right to match up with your natural diuresis yeah. and not getting your sodium potassium locked in at a point where, mm -hmm. when, what time are you cutting off water? When does your natural diuresis kick in? When's that diazide going to kick yeah, in? And then What's the, the half life to leave from Texas to Italy? Yeah, it's like a whole day. show up like a week before, right? They're not, no, they're not, it's, it's, I think he arrived like two days before. No, right? no. They were, really? they were there for oh, a really? stretch. Okay. Yeah. There was, that's not never an excuse for a, for pro athletes. That should never be an excuse in my opinion. Mm. John Jewett. It looks nah, fucking insane. Big John, like, again, like, he, I think John is 100% in the top 10. Yeah. Um, for sure. I think he's not going to be, his condition will be on point. It wouldn't always. surprise me if he's, like, over Beirut's and Fitzwater. Nah, I think from a it wouldn't muscle me. bellies and the density, if you look at, especially from the back mm -hmm. condition, John, incredible. Yeah. Beirut's same condition but more density and freaky 3d muscle you just see size john put on the last couple of months yeah i mean i'm not you can't in incredible progress mm. moving into the open is definitely the best choice he ever did i would and like to see his, him a cons bit his consistency on how he looks and improves and nails 
he's pretty mm. damn peeled on stage, but he wins a few of those poses, a few poses that he looks really nice in. But mm-hmm. I think overall, I don't think he beats Martin and Beerus. I think he's yeah. I think he locks in the top ten spot for sure. For sure, yeah. But I don't think he pushes. It would have, it would have, I, I haven't seen him next because a lot of these guys they just do shows and it's them by themselves. They don't stand next to anybody notable, which is, and that makes it very hard to predict how they're going to stand next to each other when they're on the Olympia stage. Yeah, I kind of. Right? So you kind of project on where you think you try and yeah, I'm trying to like really think of detail because I've seen a lot of his pictures, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, you know, posterior wise from, from glutes, hammies, and stuff from the back, he battles everyone. For yeah, sure. mm-hmm. like that's as good as anyone in that top six. Back density is the big thing for him. He's got a nice dialed in conditioned back, but mm. I don't think it has that wedge of extra couple of inches of wedge of thick muscle. There. Yeah. He could do another good off season because he's been kind of hovering around two twelve, right? So this is like probably the first year that he really put in the effort to put on the size and maybe with another year, he can I mean, really close the door, you know, to be bodybuilding that long mm-hmm. and to be in the two twelve for that long. And then to level up as much as he has in just one or just over a year, yeah, one or two yeah, years yeah, of being open years, yeah. mm-hmm. is insane progress. Amazing. And I think with another year, he could be a serious contender. Yeah. You know, he, he'll be in the mix and the talk for pushing the guys in the yeah, top six for sure. I agree. I agree. He, then he'll be in the mix. But I think for right now, I do think Martin and Biru's both and, and Rafa all yeah. edge mm-hmm. him out a little bit. Yeah. So he's in the top 10 for sure, 100%. Who else have we got? Mohamed Foda and Jonathan De La Rosa. Foda, great physique, really nice from certain poses, especially his front poses. His front lat spread is one of the best in the world. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, very nice uh, genetics, but he needs a lot more muscle to compete yeah. with these guys. Potentially slips into the top 10 if he nails the condition, but I doubt it. there's some really good guys there he's got to beat first. Yeah, But he will still be very nice to look at a good guy to look at for a first for his first ever Olympia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then De La Rosa. I don't know. Um, I mean, he he cool. looks, um, his comeback sort of story is yeah. great. And I've got mass respect for it. And he comes in looking incredible. Mm-hmm. I think he's battling it out with the John Jewett's kind of, yeah, you know, somewhere at the, in the back half of that top 10. Mm-hmm. I think he's got an amazing physique. His condition is always on point. He's hard as nails. Yeah. He's got that gnarly, hard, like mature muscle look, which goes a long way. Overall, size wise, stood next to some of these caliber guys. Mm. He's going to get outsized. Yeah. But still, potentially slips into a really nice top 10 position there, which is, you know, respectable. Yeah. Maybe. It's a good battle. He, give, he gives people a good battle because he doesn't miss. No, he's in shape. I just feel that he's some of the body parts are going a little bit backwards because he's older now. It's been a long time. Yeah, he's been doing this. I mean, fuck, he was there with Victor Martinez. You know, we're talking about 15 years ago. Epic comeback. Yeah. Respect. And then we have Theo Laguerre from France. Yeah. Which I, I've never seen any pictures and I don't recognize the name. So I can't play. He's him. one of these guys where he's a younger guy. I don't really. He qualified early mm-hmm. in a show where there wasn't too many people. Without being disrespectful, mm-hmm. in this lineup, he's last. Yeah. He hasn't got... To me, I look at him and I'm like, you know, he's... Happy to be there. Yeah. Should be happy to be there. <laughs> yeah. I don't see anything very special about his physique. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like he's big enough. Who, who won the UK show? Just now? Yeah. Um... It was yesterday. Yeah. I don't even remember the name. But that guy. Bruno. Like, Bruno. Okay. Yeah. So he will probably also be in like the, the, the last. Did you watch any of that? Yeah. I just saw some pictures. Oh, I was like, what? Yeah, I don't know. It's a UK, man. Presti. Pre- to me, I was I was looking at Presti the whole time. Like, he's how how did he not win that? And then they had Lewis Breed in third over like Lorenzo. Oh, there's some weird judge in there. But that's some the UK, of those guys, UK judging has always been weird. Yeah. Let's it was, I, I don't understand a lot. I maybe have to watch it again. It's, mm. you know, my opinion watching it on a phone is a lot. Yeah. It doesn't really mean much. I just saw a couple of pictures. In person, it might be like, oh no, Bruno was uh, amazing. But from mm. what I've seen, I'm like, mm. 
I don't I don't understand the judging on that show, to be honest. Bit of a weird one. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but Bruno definitely beats Theo. Okay. Yeah. You know, for sure. He's a big boy. Yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. Yeah. He's a big boy. And his condition got better show to show. So now with another four weeks mm. being dialed in, I think is, uh, he is yeah. a good look. He's a big boy. Um, is he big enough to battle that out with the quality and the no. experience and maturity of some of like, you know, guys need a couple more years. The Della Rose is the John Stewart's probably know, not. They're, 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 they haven't been pro for that long and they haven't been, I mean, I don't recognize the name, so yeah. it just means that they're not really. I mean, I love a wild card and I love a new mm. guy that shows up and just like, holy shit, he's straight into a top 10 at the Olympia. Um, like respect, it, but yeah. it doesn't happen too often. No, Kevin Lavroni, Kevin Lavroni was, or, or Derek Lunsford, those were like yeah. the last guys that just go straight to the top Nathan his first Olympia was inside the top 10 I think no, it was 10th okay. and the only other one I can think of for a while is probably do you remember when Joss Lenarthowitz from Australia oh yeah mm-hmm. when he had hair and he did his first ever yeah. Olympia right. and he was very he was like way smaller but yeah. super aesthetic right. dialed in mm-hmm. and a really nice shape I he walked think, into the top 10 I don't think Andrew Jack was also top 10 first, first Olympia Andrew Jack definitely was yeah Samson yeah. was six or something i don't know yeah, yeah but these are all big names you know so yeah and these are huge physiques you know these are very very high quality physiques but yeah theo yeah. is yeah young guy i mean he's got loads of time to keep yeah. growing his stuff but no one i'm he's not on the radar no so if we gonna have to call it now top six by placing you go first hardy derek nick samson uh Fitzwater, Andrew. How do you, Derek? Nick Samson, mm-hmm. Fitzwater, Andrew. Yeah. You're putting Andrew over, uh, Martin beats Andrew Jacked. Because Fitzwater will get in shape. And Andrew hasn't shown it yet. He's gotten better, though. He's Everyone gotten better, yeah. Gotten better and better. I just go by track record. Right yeah. now, I'm gonna go with. <laughs> we can change it next, but then we'll do one more recording before we go. Then we'll have more. Uh, I'm gonna go wild card, uh, and I'm gonna go Samson. Samson first, okay. Derek, yeah. Hardy, Jesus, Andrew, yeah. Nick, ho, oh. and sixth place, Beirut. If he makes it, yeah, I can only go by who I know is definitely going. Yeah. So Beirut is not in this conversation until I know he's mm. confirmed. Yeah, that's right. Without that. being confirmed, I would say uh, it's between Rafa and Martin. Okay, probably Martin. Yeah, oh, but I do really like Rafa's physique. Yeah, he's he's got to dial of, it in. You got to dial it in. He put on a lot of size, though. He's got to dial it in. He did put on a lot of size. Oh. It's between them two. You know, the funny thing is you sit there. And then there's a <clears throat> Brendan Curry who could just sneak in as well. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be good. I guess this is going to be a really good Olympia. I can't wait. Yeah. So at least when you step in the audience and you see them walk out one by one, then you can place them a lot better. Because, you know, the, the, like with the athletes meeting and all the obligations, and like people are going to miss their mark, man. Like everybody assumes that they're going to be in great shape based on what they showed at previous it's shows. It's not like any other show, right? It's yeah. just like two days of being off of plan and media obligations and it's, all of it's this way kind of way worse than any other show they've it's, got to be yeah. to, to keep hold of a look and to peak mm. is so much more difficult yeah and uh yeah we'll see all i can uh, i guess something else to consider as well as the coaches that have been there and done it it's hard to not go with a hardy and a Derek because they've both done the olympia so many times yeah with with, with Arnie, Arnie yeah. who knows exactly how to manage that timeline. And he's very good at that. He knows exactly, yeah. okay, you've got, this is what's happening on this day, this mm. day, this day, this is what we've done before. And he doesn't miss. So that does come into the, in, it just, this does come into play. Oh, I don't know. I can just imagine how stressful it is from both points of view, from the athletes and from the coaches and, uh, if you got a lot of experience, you're kind of used to it, you know. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we got the press conference that we'll go to on Thursday, and then we go straight to uh, press conference. Are we going to go to the press conference? Yeah, of course. 
Is it going to be another Bodchikarelli cringe oh, so fest? Is, but you can get some uh, ideas to get your blue suede shoes in. <laughs> oh, did you see the post I sent you with uh, Bob versus Tim on the oh, shoes? Oh, there's always drama there. Dude, that's some cool shoes. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tim, uh, Tim, yeah. I've got, Newton, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. On, I'm, I'm Team Tim for the shoes. Let's go, Tim. Let's go, Tim. Team Mutant yeah. Shoes Crew. Is Mutant or Project AD, right? Mutant. He's the Mutant CEO. All right, Link. Tim owns Mutant. And uh, he's got the shoes to prove it. But, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an incredible – I don't know. The press. Every time I watch the press conference on the on the internet, mm. I'm like, ugh, cringe fest. If Sean, Sean uh, uh, you know, is they there – They can't let Sean Ray and Bob do it. They can't. These guys can't even remember their own names, <laughs> let alone athletes' names. Just let some uh, let, they, let Dennis, Dennis James put it. Let Dennis James yeah. do it with, with someone else, Dennis and Phil. Dennis and Milos, great. that would be great. Den- no, because Milos <laughs> is just, well, you know, I argue <laughs> like Milos is great, but great for podcasts. Yeah. Maybe not for the, uh, for the press. I don't know. Maybe that would be fun. I think actually. it would be fun, Dennis. Be fun. Because they do but the podcast with uh, everyone, Muscle and Fitness, right? So spill. I think it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. They speak very, very hard. The, the Phil Heath's commentary mm. was excellent. Yeah. I think having an athlete on stage who's been there and done it. Yeah. Asking the right questions. That'll be okay. Remembering yeah. people's names and not yeah. just being a cringe fest. <laughs> I think yeah. this is what I call for. Vote for this. Dennis James is good at it. Mm-hmm. Phil Heath. Yeah. And AJ Kelly. AJ Kelly? Yeah. It's a little bit too hyped sometimes. Bro, he's what he's done for bodybuilding a super from a fat. promotional point of view yeah. on just his Instagram stories. Mm-hmm. He has got more eyes on bodybuilding this year than any yeah, other, media, true. Any yeah, other true. media outlet in the business. True. And his excitement and passion for it. Some people might not like it. I think it's hilarious. It's brilliant. Uh, and, but his knowledge, he knows every single person. Yeah, every he's, a athlete, super, he's a super fan. So he ultra exactly, fan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he is perfect to be, one, I think he should be the athlete's rep because. Yeah, he'll be able to do it be, good. You yeah. do good. He actually cares about athletes and he would be a voice, a natural voice, mm-hmm. not just someone in the background. He should be lead commentator, and he should do the press conference. Those three jobs. Those three? AJ Kelly Roberts. It is Kelly Roberts, right? I yeah, AJ the, Kelly. Yeah, that's what I know from. Yeah. Legend. And He's I think doing he... Uh, uh, for development uh, interviews. He was on uh, so Fort Abia's channel for a while. And he's, yeah, he's uh, been part of the sport for a long time. He's a really, really good person for the sport, in mm-hmm. my opinion. From what he's done just on his phone, just him and his phone. Just those things alone, just his Instagram stories. Yeah. Whenever there's a show on, and he's pretty I go himself. straight to his stories oh, really? to see yeah. what's going on because yeah. he doesn't miss a thing. No, that's true. Yeah, that's true. He's very important. Yeah. And his commentary is good. So it's usually better than the live stream because the live stream is no, really crappy someone. commentary. Yeah, it's all this so, uh, yeah, shout out to AJ. Cool. You the man. You the man. All right. So let's leave it there. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll do one more episode before we go to the United States. Uh, booth 201. We'll be there for sure. And uh, yeah, that's that's all we got for today, guys. Yeah. Peace, love, and gains. Peace out. Ooh.